guys so in this video we'll be looking at the two different types of forces okay so the first force we have is contact forces and then the second one we have non-contact aka field forces and within those forces we have different types of forces but we're going to first start with contact forces so what is a contact force it is when objects are in contact with each other and exert forces on each other they are physically touching one another that is what contact means so me sitting on the chair that is a contact force because i'm physically touching the chair um you kicking the ball you physically touched the ball so that is a contact force it's basically when two objects are touching each other and the force is being exerted on each other and then we have non-contact aka field forces and those are objects that are not in contact with each other and exert forces on each other so it's basically the opposite of contact forces where they are not actually touching each other a great example would be in space none of the planets are touching each other which means that they are in its field forces that are being applied there because they're not touching each other or the moon and the earth they're not touching each other but there's still a force being exerted on each other which we will get into but first let's go to contact forces so the first contact force we have is friction you have done this in grade eight what friction is it's basically a continuation of that so friction forces oppose motion which means that friction always 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 acts in the opposite direction to the motion of an object always remember that friction is always the opposite of the force for example this is from Sia Vula I really like this example if you are kicking a ball across grass you kick the ball that is a force exerted on the ball the ball is obviously gonna slow down right why is it slowing down? Because the grass is, it's rubbing against the grass. The grass is providing friction, which makes the ball slow down. That is an example of friction. Or let's say you are dragging a table across the room. Or dragging, pulling, pulling a table across the room. Obviously, it won't be the easiest task because the legs of the table are rubbing up against the floor. That is friction. It is preventing you from applying the force. So that is how... I would understand friction it is always the opposite of force it opposes it okay it's like an opposition and then we have a diagram here showing friction and force we will get to weight um, in the another video but this is an example of where friction is the opposite of force can you see my force is being applied that way obviously my friction would be that way okay and then we have tension and compression. Tension, we're not speaking of relationship type of tension here. This is a different type of tension. Okay, so tension is the pulling or stretching force transmitted on an object. So let's say you are pulling, again, a tug of war. Four people on the side, four people on the other side. Each group is pulling the wall. There's going to be tension in that rope. Why? Because it is stretching. Or well, let's say if you take an elastic and you try and stretch it, stretch it, stretch it, you are pulling that elastic. It's causing tension in it because it is stretching. So that is what stretching, not stretch, that is what tension is, okay? And then we have compression, which is when a physical force presses inward on an object, causing it to become compacted. I think in grade six, I'm not really sure, but you guys did springs. You know like how a spring works when you like squash it together it becomes small and then when you leave it it becomes big that's exactly the same thing here that is what compression is it's making something smaller by applying a force on it and can you see how they are contact forces because they are literally touching one another friction the grass and the ball touching one another the table and the um, the floor touching um, one another then tension the hands of the people and the rope are in contact compression your hands and the spring are in contact so those are all contact forces they are literally touching one another those are contact forces okay now we're going to the non-contact aka field forces and what is that opposite of contact they are not touching each other okay so the first one we have is a gravitational force look at the word gravitational what comes to mind 
gravity. I'm sure you have heard gravity somewhere, somehow. You should know what gravity is, okay? So gravitational force is the force which causes things to fall towards the earth and prevents it from falling off the planet. So I'm sure you've seen, um, I'm not sure movies you guys, you guys would watch, but like, I don't know, but like in space, I'm sure you've seen that like when astronauts are like in space, they're floating around. Why? Because there's no gravity there. Whereas if you're on the ground, you won't see anybody floating. If someone is floating, then yeah, there's something weird going on there. But that is because of the gravitational force that exists on Earth. It is pulling you towards the Earth. That's why you are not falling or not falling, floating. Your things are not floating. Or even let's say you drop a pencil. It's not going to bounce back up. Why? Because gravity is pulling it down. Okay? And you can't see gravity. That's another thing. So it exists between any two objects with mass and there are forces of attraction or pulling. Like I said, it's basically pulling you towards the earth. That's why you are not floating. Okay? Then the bigger the mass of the objects, the greater the force between them. Let's go back to space now. Where we have the sun and the earth. Very, 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 very big distance um, between them. But they are huge. I don't know the exact weight. Not the exact weight. The exact mass of the, the sun and the earth. But they are very huge. Obviously, which means that the gravitational force between them would be great. The same thing with the moon and the earth. Although the moon is small, but there's still a great gravitational force between them. Then it says... The closer objects are to each other, the stronger the gravitational force between them. So the gravitational force between the Earth and the Moon should be stronger than the gravitational force between the Earth and Neptune. Because why? They are closer to each other. So that is what gravitational force is. Are, they touching, are the planets touching each other? No. When the gravity is pulling you down, or not you down, uh, your pencil down, are they touching each other? No. That's why it's a non-contact force. Okay. Then we're going to move on to weight. And you have done this in maths already. I think in grade 6. Where you discuss what's the difference between weight and mass. Okay. So first of all. Whenever you're telling somebody. Oh I weigh so and so. Or I weigh 50 kgs. You are saying it wrong. We are scientists now. You must start saying. My mass is. Da -da 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 -da. Because why is weight wrong? Because weight is measured in newtons and it is the gravitational force of attraction exerted on the object by the earth or another planet. So your weight always your weight is always going to change. If you go to the moon, your weight is going to be different. Why? Because of the different gravitational force the, the moon has. If you go to Neptune, your weight is going to change. Why? Because of the different gravitational force there. So your weight always, always changed and it is measured in newtons. Not kilograms, not pounds, not stone. It is measured in newtons. Your mass is what is, let's say, 50 kilograms. Because it is the amount of matter in an object. So if you go to the moon, your mass is going to stay the same. Go to Neptune, your mass is going to stay the same. It is only your weight that changes because of the different gravitational force. Weight is dependent on the gravitational force. Okay. And then here, obviously, this is going to be something major in physics, where the Earth's gravitational acceleration is 9.8 meters per second per second. But that is going to be discussed more in my grade 10. And then the formula for calculating weight is equal to, or is weight is equal to, mass times gravitational acceleration of that planet. Okay. Then we have now magnetic forces. Okay. And it is the attractive or repulsive force that is exerted between the poles of a magnet. I'm sure you guys have played with those like clanging, I don't know what they're called, like those magnets that you guys like to bang against each other. It's very annoying. But that is basically what those are. It's an attractive and repulsive force. So you know how you put two magnets together. They don't want to stick together. Especially, not especially, when the poles are different. So I'm going to quickly show you guys... Um, a picture of what I'm talking about. Okay, this is what I was talking about. Can you see that this is a bar magnet where the S and the N represent the different poles that a magnet has, where the south pole is the gray part and the red part is the north pole. Every magnet has a north pole and a south pole. 
So like when I was saying like how they repel each other, if you were to take another magnet and another bar magnet and the end part comes together with this end part, they will not stick together or they will not glue or attract each other because they are the same. How magnetic forces work is when opposite poles, um, when you have opposite poles, they are going to attract one another. So if I had an S here, I put it by the N, they would attract each other because they are opposite. Whereas if I have an N here, they would, they would repel each other because they are the same. So the rule is opposite poles attract like and like poles repel. That is the rule. And then I'm sure you guys have known this or like you've seen on your phones or an actual compass. The earth has a magnetic field. Like you know how we have the North Pole where Father, Father Christmas or Santa Claus stays and then we have the South Pole. That is exactly where it came from because the earth has its own magnetic field. And that is an example of the earth's magnetic fields. These lines show the magnetic fields. And then in relation to when I was saying that the uh, opposite poles attract and then like poles repel. This is what I was speaking of. Where we have the North Pole here and the South Pole here. Can you see they are attracting each other? This is how you draw magnetic fields, by the way. Your teachers are going to show you this. Can you see that they are attracting each other? And then here, obviously they are the same, so they are repelling each other. So they are not going to come close together because they are the same. Okay, now we have our last type of force we are going to look at which is electrostatic forces. You have dealt with this in grade 8 as well, so this should not be new to you. So it is a, the attractive or repulsive force between two electronically charged objects. You remember when, um, I'm sure your teachers have done this example with you, like you take your ruler and then you rub it on your hair and then you try and lift the page with it. That's an example of electrostatic force. Or... Um, you're combing your hair and then sometimes your hair starts floating up. That is an example of an electrostatic force. Okay, so when rubbing certain materials together, they can acquire an electrostatic charge as a result of the loss or gain of electrons. Remember, protons do not move. We are focused only on electrons. They are the ones that move. So you take your hair, for example, let's say it is... No, actually, they are both neutral. You're combing your hair neutral. You start combing your hair. Let's say the um, electrons from the comb go onto your hair. So now that your hair is now more, has more electrons now, it's going to be now attracted to your comb. That's basically how it works. And then objects which have like charges repel and those with unlike charges attract. It's the same thing with um, the magnetic forces where likes they uh, repel each other and then opposites or unlikes, they repel each other. So that's basically what it is. So this was just a summary of the different types of forces with examples. Um, I hope it helps. But yeah, bye.